Do you already own a shed load of Ryobi batteries, but you're looking for something that's going to keep you cool in the summer better than the Ryobi fan that's kind of weak? Then in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use this Ryobi battery with this much more powerful rigid fan to keep you cool anywhere. Stay tuned for the instructions. So we were down in Florida camping and it was hot even in the morning. So I went to the home dust spot looking for uh, some kind of fan that ran off uh, battery tools, especially the Ryobi tools that I have, so we could keep ourselves cool. So my initial inclination was to buy this Ryobi One Plus cordless 18 volt fan because it works with all my Ryobi batteries that I already have and um, got a lot of Ryobi power tools and batteries. So, and also it uses, um, it's hybrid, so you can use battery or corded so you can plug it into AC power if you have AC power available. Yeah, this is the one I thought I was gonna get. I was looking at it more closely here, they have a demo model, and some of the things that kind of were uh, bothering me was this like really thick bars that protect the blades. Just seemed like overkill in terms of uh, blocking the airflow passing through the fan. These super thick bars right here, which I don't know what those, the purpose of those are for. This seems like totally unnecessary. You can see on the blades themselves, they have these little lines in there. These grooves that are supposed to, I've seen that used to like make uh, blades quieter. I've seen that on computer fans. It's supposed to make the fan quieter. And in the back, they have these like uh, dimples, which they put pluses in, I guess, for the one plus. So the dimples on the back, probably also uh, kind of like a golf ball, where they create a layer of turbulence that um, overall reduces the turbulence and increases the performance of the fan. So it's only got two speeds. I guess that's low and high. It doesn't have a speed control. It's got the connection on the back for the AC power and it's got a connection for the 18 volt battery. This is as far as it swivels down from horizontal. There's a stop back here. You can see that stop there. It also swivels all the way up like that. And that's the stop on the other direction. It's got a hook on the front. You can rotate that hook out. Looks like it has some points for screwing it in. If you want to mount it like permanently maybe got some hooks in the back but then as i was looking around the store more for other options i saw this rigid 18 volt fan and i don't have any rigid batteries but this fan looked a lot nicer like just uh, you know looked bigger larger more powerful had a full speed control for controlling the fan speed so it's not just two settings and it was also a hybrid fan and was only 10 bucks more than the Ryobi fan. I knew since it was the same voltage that I could um, just get an adapter for the Ryobi battery to attach it onto the rigid fan. So I ended up getting this rigid fan to use instead and I'm going to do a comparison of the two later. The blades on the rigid fan, unlike the Ryobi fan, actually have a very narrow profile. There's looks like there's more blades total but they have a very narrow profile that's also aerodynamically shaped. It's not just like um, a block, you know, on one side like the Ryobi one is. It's actually like a little airfoil. So that should provide some better aerodynamics for the airflow coming out instead of inhibiting the airflow. So check out how easy this Ryobi One Plus battery actually fits inside of the back of the rigid fan. That slides just perfectly in there and locks in place. In fact, if you had like a little elastic strap around there, it would hold it in place just fine. And also this uh, adapter here, this Ryobi 18 volt battery adapter, it slides over this with plenty of space to spare. The only thing is a fan can only tilt uh, to just a little bit above horizontal with that in place there. It's not gonna, it's not gonna tilt any more than that, but usually you point the fan upwards anyways, so. Unless you need to point the fan downwards, if you need to point the fan down, then you could just slide this out and leave it out a little bit and be able to point the fan down like that. So you could always, you could always slide that in like that. But if you want it to be portable as a single unit, then this actually works pretty well. You could also put the battery on the side like this and strap it in if you want if you needed to aim the fan down more Let's see the rubber 
that's not elegant, but this, this will work for me for 90% of what I need to do. On the tool side connector of the rigid battery connection, it's uh, actually a female contact. So you're gonna need to use a male terminal connector like this, and these have plastic covers on them, so they're not gonna reach in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut away the plastic cover, and uh, it's because it's all I had on hand. So preferably you'd have some that don't have the plastic cover on there. I'm just gonna trim this away. Here I cut off the most of the plastic. I left a little bit of plastic on the top and the bottom because you'll see when this slides into here, then the plastic stays on top and kind of keeps it on there, uh, keeps it in place. I might even be able to zip tie around that. So I can put these in there. So now I have a way to connect inside of the rigid connector on the tool side, on the fan side. I'm gonna be using these Anderson power pole connectors. Here I already have one that's wired up because I use this for a lot of my 12 volt accessories and uh, anything I need to connect that's like 12 to 18 volts. So then I can then I can hook this up into other things. Like I can hook it up in my uh, van or car or cigarette lighter adapter. So I'm gonna see if this, uh, this should be long enough here. And then I can just uh, zip tie it down to the base and then I'll have a connector here that I can use. Yeah, that should be long enough. I can zip tie it over here. I had to change my terminals to a larger terminal because the wires I was using were heavier gauge and those blue things earlier, but the same concept still applies. So on the rigid tool connector, positive or red wire is going to go on the left and the negative black wire is going to go on the right. So I'm going to plug those in right now. And ultimately, I'd like to make like a 3D printed part that just slides in there and locks in. That's kind of like an imitator of the battery. But for right now, this is just going to be the uh, temporary solution until I do that. And I'm going to take this, bring it over here, drill a hole, and then zip tight over here. The main part that you will need to make this happen is this Ryobi 18 volt battery adapter. And it has contacts in the bottom there that touch on the contacts in the battery. And it's, this one is 3D printed. You can find them on eBay or Amazon. And then it just slides on top and it connects to the battery. And this is the interface of the battery. There are some that are more complex that have things that go onto the snap. So they actually snap on. This one's very simple. It's, uh, you just attach it there and it's also inexpensive. So I'm gonna add some Anderson power pole connectors, these here to this ends of these cables. And there we go, it's all hooked up. Now we can just put a elastic strap around here to keep the battery in or a, some kind of releasable zip tie or something or Velcro. And then here's the connection and let's see if it works. Let's turn it on. Oh yeah, works great. Perfect. Here I've added this elastic strap to keep it in. And this strap is just something from some, um, some old swimming glasses that were bad and the strap was still good. So I just keep elastic stuff like that around to use for, you know, who knows what, like stuff like this. So like this keeps the battery in place in here, keeps it from, keeps it from sliding out. And so you can do any other makeshift strap. 
You can also, I was thinking to put a, uh, a zip tie like around here and then attach the strap to the zip tie there so the strap portion is shorter. This strap actually goes in, over the front and goes underneath the front like that so it doesn't interfere with the knob, the control knob. So all together that works great. This was my first use of the rigid fan powered by the Ryobi battery. This is in our neighborhood pool pump room, which when you have to work in this room in the summer feels like you're only one floor above hell. The fan was a lifesaver when I had to work in here to replace the pool pump seals and fix the motor bearings. Now I've used this fan in so many different situations and I don't know how I sweated my life away before it. <laughs>